So let me read verse 14 of chapter 17. And then we're going to pray, and I'm just going to walk you through these verses, um, verses 8 through 16, so we can hear the simple truths that God has in store for us this morning. Verse 14 says, For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, The jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. I want to bless somebody this morning. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. Let us pray. As we go to your word, speak to me, speak through me to your people, bring to remembrance God, and I'm praying that a word would be shared That where we find ourselves, God, that we know you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So as we go to your word, we need an encouragement this morning because a lot of people have lost jobs. A lot of people are struggling financially. A lot of people are concerned as it relates to how they're going to survive. But God, you have an Elijah generation that's still called to go to the Ahabs of this world and say, thus saith the Lord. So Holy Spirit. We want to hear from you this morning. So Felix moves out of the way and invite you to speak. I invite you to have your reign in our lives. It is in your name we pray and thank you. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much for just being a blessing. Amen. Bless the Lord. Hey, uh, I want to review briefly what we've been talking about. We've been in this series called The Elijah Generation. And today is the third Um, that we've been doing this. Next week, we're going to take a break because it's going to be Easter. We have a special word we want to share with you, and we want to invite you, your friends, to come and be with us. I just had this idea. How about if, you know, at home, put on your best Sunday, go meeting clothes for Easter, you know what I mean? And gather around that television, turn the stereo on, have your own Easter service at home. So make sure you join us in that, right? So, so we've, been, we've been in this series on the Elijah generation. And here's the big thing that we've been trying to get you to understand is that the big idea of the whole series has been this. Choose God, right? That's capital G-O-D. That's big God, not the small gods of this world. And for too long, we've been competing, you know, with the small gods of this world taking the place of the big God, capital G-O-D. And this series that we've been dealing with is all about Um, Ahab coming on the scene as king reigning over Judah and then all of a sudden he's trying to bring Baalism into perspective or to make Baal seem as if he is on par with God but I want to share with you this morning God is not going to have that so he presents Elijah to go to Ahab and here's the thing um, I want you to understand about this what we shared last week as it relates to the Elijah generation three three simple truths right number one that if you're part of the Elijah generation, there's a call on all of our lives to go to Ahab and say to him, thus said the Lord. So in other words, we've got to be able to proclaim the word of God boldly, and it doesn't matter to who, it doesn't matter where, but we've got to be bold to say, thus said the Lord, right? And then the second thing that we saw about that is when you make the decision to be bold about going and say, thus said the Lord, you have the guarantee and the assurance that God is going to protect you. I don't know about you, but that's exciting. That's good to know that there's protection when we may decide to make a proclamation for God's word. Now, here's something where we hung out a little bit last night, uh, last week. And we also did this in our Wednesday Bible study. If you miss it, make sure you go check the worship on the mind, right? The man. Protection now doesn't always mean exemption. Now, this is important for the body of Christ, and this is important for the church as a whole. Because God is willing and God is able to protect, it doesn't mean that we need to be stupid, and it doesn't mean that we're going to be exempt from the consequences of what's going on. We still need to exercise wisdom. So, so let, me, let me say this here parenthetically to all of you that's listening to me. If the edict now is wear a mask, get you a mask and put it on. It's okay, all right? It's not going to mess your, your, your swag or your groove. Get one that matches your outfit. Do whatever you got to do, right? But because protection doesn't necessarily mean exemption, but God still got you, right? And then here's the third thing that we shared last week. It's good news to know that God always provides 
And I'm going to, I, I want to pick that up a little bit today, that, that there, there's a proclamation that we've got to make. There's protection in the proclamation, right? And then there's provision when we decide to, to do and to say what God would have us to do and say. So look with me. Let, let me back up. Back up to what verse is that? Back up to verse uh, 7 of chapter 17. Well, verse 6. Let me read that, then I'm going to make this statement, then we're going to go into the lesson for today. It says here, and, 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 the, and the ravens brought him, this is Elijah as he's by the brook, bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Now I'm going to invite you to read verses 1 through 7 to really get a feel of what I'm saying, right? Now look at verse 7. After a while, the text says, the brook dried up. Because there was no rain in the land, right? Listen, listen to this point. Be careful. This is where we're going to go into what we're going to talk about today. Be careful of getting comfortable with those places of provision as God can and will cause your brook to, rem- uh, to dry up to remind you of who the provider is. Okay, lock into this. Then we're going to go into the message today. Elijah said to Ahab, a drought is going to come. There will be no rain. God takes Elijah and puts him by the Cherith brook and has him there for a season, and God provides for him. And, and so because of the drought, the brook in time eventually dried up. Now, I want to keep emphasizing this point. I want to say it before we move into what we're going to talk about today. Is that for me and for a lot of us, sometimes we can make the provision that God is giving us our job. Uh, We we can make it our God, I'm sorry. And we can become comfortable in that. So sometimes God, if it's the job, he will take those things away. If it's the home, he'll take those things away. If it's the spouse, he'll take those things away. If it's food, he'll take those things away. So here's what I'm saying. Be careful of worshiping the provision and not the provider. (laughs) You get it? You get it? Because here's what will happen. Your brook will dry up. So, So if your brook is looking scarce this morning, if your brook is looking dry and you're kind of wondering what in the world, here's what I want to say to you. Sometimes God will dry your brook up to let you know who provider is. So today, I want to talk a little bit more about provision And I've just got two simple truths to share with you. So look with me at verses 7 through 10. We're going to do this in section. I want to go verse 7 through 12. Let me just read the whole thing, then we're going to talk about it. Here's what it says in verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him, being Elijah, and says to him, Arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, he said, I've commanded a widow there to feed you. So he, being Elijah, arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And here's what she said. As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug, in a jug, and I am now gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Now, I want to share two things with you that you need not miss with the text. Now, understand with me. Before we got to verse 8, Elisha found himself sitting by this brook, and God was providing for him. So let me paint a picture for you. Elijah got comfortable where he was. He got comfortable in the provision. It was safe. It was a nice place. When he woke up in the morning, the raven would be there and the raven would feed him. When he'd go to bed at night, the raven would be there and the raven would feed him. In other words, he had three comfortable meals, even though it was bird food. (laughs) He had three comfortable meals. and, and, And here's the thing I want you not to miss. And then while he was there... I'm going to say this. He, it was easy for him to be 
become comfortable in himself while everybody else was out there doing their own thing. But then God dries the brook up, and here's what I want you to understand. Sometimes the reason God will dry the brook up is to engage us, to allow us to engage him and be engaged with him in what he is doing in the earth realm. So now, as we look at this text, I want to share two things. Here's the first thing I want you all to lock into this. Hear me say this. God will confront any enemy in their own territory to show them who is in control. I'm saying it again, because you're probably wondering, where in the world is Pastor Felix going with this, just looking at what it says? God will confront any enemy in their own territory to show the enemy who is in control. Y'all look at this text. Understand with me that at the bottom of all of this is a battle of the gods. Understand, Ahab and Jezebel had issued an edict that Baal worship is no different than worshiping God. And I said this during the series, last I checked in Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy 5, God says this, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. You shall have no other God before me. You shall not make an image that looks like them. You shall not bow down or worship them. So here's what I want you all to lock into. Whenever we set up anything in the place of God to try to compete with God, God is going to confront them. Okay? Now, here's the thing I want you all to lock into with me at the text. Sometimes God will use you. Ah, as an Elijah generation to go to the Ahabs of the world and to confront them. So look at the text. Look at the text. Verse 8 says, then the word of the Lord came to him. And here's what God says. Arise and go to Zarephath. And don't miss the text, guys. Watch the details. Which belongs to Sidon, Sidon, and then dwell there. And look at the third thing. I have commanded a widow there to feed you. Now, I don't know about you, but, but here's what you got to know. Elijah knows where Zarephath is. We may not know where Zarephath is, but Elijah knows. So here's Elijah by the brook. Hey, God, can't you send me to Aurora instead? Why well, I got to go to Zarephath? Well, because that's where the work is. So, preacher, what's in there? Because I'm comfortable by the brook, God. I'm comfortable by the brook. So why do I have to go that direction? Just send another raven. Or you have the ability to make it rain. You have the ability to provide for me. And God says, no, 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 no. I need you to go to Zarephath. And my translation says, and yours probably says the same thing, Zarephath belongs to Sidon. Okay? Now, here's what you need to know. If you back up with me, if you back up with me to chapter 17, right around, I mean chapter 16, right around verse 31, here's what you're going to find out about Ahab. Watch this. It says here in verse 31, and as if it had been no light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, talking about Ahab, he took for his wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ephbaal, and watch this, king of the Sidonians. Sidonians. Now, back back up to verse 8. Go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon. Look at 31. Ephbaal was king of Sidon. Interesting. So here's what God is doing. If you look at what's really happening in the text, if you know anything about Sidon, it was located north of where he was by this brook, right? And God sent him here, and Sidon is located between Tyre and, 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 and up here and Sidon. And God says to him, I need you to go up here, and here's what's happening. Here's what's happening in Zarephath. Zarephath is where Ephbaal was from. Zarephath is Jezebel's hometown. Zarephath is where the center of Baal worship is. Now, this is the Ahab, I need you to leave where you are and go to where they worship Baal. And in the middle of where they're worshiping Baal, where they're struggling, I have commanded, I love this, a widow to do what? Prepare you and to feed you. I want y'all to hear me say this morning that God will confront the enemy in his own territory 
to show him who's in control. And let me say this, and sometimes I want you to hear me understand this. As part of the Elijah generation, sometimes God will use you and God will use me to go into enemy territory. Oh, y'all not hearing me this morning. To go into enemy territory to tell them, thus said the Lord. But the problem with me and the problem with you is we like being by the brook. <laughs> and there comes a point in time where God will say, you've got to leave that brook. And, 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 here, here, and, and, and don't go find you another brook. I want you to go in the middle of enemy territory. Why? Because understand with me, the battle is between me and Baal. And they're worshiping Baal because they think Baal can provide. And I need them to know who the real provider is. So I want you to go into a dry place. Lord, have mercy and make my name great. I want you to go into a dry place. So look at the text. So he says, I've commanded a woman there to feed you. Look at verse 10. So Elijah rose and he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of that city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. <laughs> Look at this. Look at verse 12. And here's what's happening. Understand we're in Zarephath now, in, in Baal territory. As the Lord your God lives... I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. And I'm now gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare for myself and my son that we may eat and die. Look at verse 12 again. And she said, as the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked. Now, I, I, I think Elijah's bold. He's standing by the gate of Baal territory. Hey, lady. Hook a brother up. <laughs> Give me some water. Give me a piece of bread while you're at it. It's almost as if Elijah's being sarcastic. By the brook, we had water. Over here, where Baal worship, I sure know y'all ain't got nothing. <laughs> so I tell you what. Give me some water. Give me a piece of bread. And, and something about Elijah, when I look at the text, that caused this woman in the middle of Baal territory to see him different and recognize him. Because here's what she says. She did not refer to him as a worshiper of Baal. She says, as the Lord your God lives, not my God, but your God lives. So here's what I want to say. I wonder if people can recognize us when we walk into Baal territory or do we look just like them? <laughs> Hear me out. And then when I look at this, she's, it's almost as if she's saying, hey, hey, dude, you know, your God knows that I don't have nothing baked. I don't have nothing prepared because, and the reason we don't have much of anything is, is, is because Baal can't provide and we recognize that we're in this because your God is doing something. I want y'all to hear me. I want y'all to hear me. I want y'all to hear me. We're in this because your God is doing something. And then she says, I have nothing to make, only a handful of flour and a little jar of oil. And so here's what, I just got this little bit left, and I'm going to use it up, and then me and my family are going to die. It's almost as if she's saying, listen to me carefully, if this drought continues, none of us going to make it. Boy, doesn't that sound familiar? Let me go here. If this virus continues, none of us going to make it. And, and, and if she were in Aurora, here she would say, I only got one roll of toilet paper left. Are you asking me for some? Come on now. This is just enough for me and my boy. And here's Elijah. Go ahead and give me some anyway. And <laughs> come on, y'all. It's as if God is doing something. Listen to this. In enemy territory, because God just provided for him, now God wants to show this person that he can, not only does he provide for his own, but he can provide for Gentiles in their territory. So here's what he's doing. He's shaming Baal. He's showing up in Baal's own backyard and showing Baal... Who really is in control? You can't even provide for your own. 
Lord Jesus, I wish I had. Are you hearing me out there? But I want to show you what God could do. So lock into this. And then notice this. And then verse 33, Elijah said to the woman, do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But first bring me a little cake of it. Make me a little cake of it and bring it to me. And afterward, make something for yourself and your son. Now, now this is troubling. Because if I'm her, I'm going to say, I know you're tripping. Let me get mine first. And then we're going to hook you up. Right? But he says, no, no, no. Don't, don't do it that way. Bring it first to me. And then afterward, go get some for your son. Now look at verse 14. And I'm almost done. For thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty. When? For how long? Until the day that the Lord God sends rains upon the earth. Look at 15. And she went and did as Elijah said, and as she and her household, and she and her household ate for many days, the jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that was spoken by Elijah. Listen to this second thing, and I'm done. God can use the most unlikely source to provide for his people in the middle of a drought. Here's what verse 8 says. Go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon. Stay there. I have a woman, a widow, who will provide for you. Here's what you need to know about the widow, then I'm going I'm to be done with this. The poorest of poor, the one with the least amount of resources. And if a famine is going to strike the land, the first person to run out of anything, it would be the widows. Unlikely person. I could understand if God had said, hey, hey, go to Zarephath and then go to the rich people or go to Zarephath and go to the one who have the most. No, no, no. The most unlikely person. The most unlikely source. Here's my word of encouragement that I want to say to us this morning. It looks bad right now in culture. A lot of us, a lot of you have lost jobs, layoff, no income, income is scarce, and we're wondering where provision is going to come from. Church, here is what I want to say to the people of God. Here's what I want to say to the nations this morning. God can use the most unlikely source to provide for his people. Now, where are you going with this? So, so, so let me tell this story, then I'll be done. To show you how God works. Most churches, matter of fact, every church, if you're following the law, cannot hold congregational meeting. So here's what's happening. Income is down. Attendance is non-existent. And people are wondering how they're going to make it. Some of you have gone to work. And here's what's happened. You go to work and your boss calls you and says, hey, we can't have you anymore. You got to go home. You got to work from home. Or we've got to cut employees. We, all this stuff is happening. Uh, and, and we're trying to figure out how in the world we're going to make it. I had a pastor friend of mine call me. And he, I think it was Thursday morning. He texts me early in the morning. He says, hey, Pastor Felix. Have you heard about the CARES Act? And have you applied for the CARES Act yet? Right? And I said to him, I've heard about it. Call my board. And we're going through that process. Here's what you got to know about the CARES Act. Here's what the CARES Act is. Overall, it's uh, over 300, I think it's like $380 billion that the government has allocated for small businesses to survive. Here's the beauty of that. It even transfers to churches, to organizations, to, to businesses. And, and the purpose of this is to provide relief in the midst of this coronavirus process. Now, I don't want you to take that lightly. I want you to hear me say this. God can use the most unlikely source, y'all not hear me, to provide for his people. Here's what my mortgage company told me when I'm worried about how am I going to make my mortgage. Hey, Mr. Gilbert, we can provide a three-month forbearance because of what the CARES Act is. Y'all get this? Where I'm struggling about where, where am I going to get money to pay my mortgage. Y'all not hearing me this morning. And then I get to verse 14. 
And because I trust God, and because I'm willing to go to Zarephath, here's what God says to me. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty. For how long? Until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. Let me encourage you people with this word. It doesn't matter where you find yourself. The God, God who owns the cattle on a thousand hills, the God who the earth is his and the fullness thereof. If he can provide for Elijah by a brook, if you're part of the Elijah generation, he can provide for you. I think it was Tyler Perry that started this thing on Facebook. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wild world in his hand. I want to say to you this morning, stay faithful to God. If you're part of the Elijah generation, the jar a flower shall not go empty, and the oil may not run dry until God sends rain on the earth. If you're worrying about when is all this going to be over so you can go back to life as normal, no, 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 no. Don't wait to go back to normal where we find ourselves right now. God's got you. The jar of flour will not run dry, and the jar of oil will not go empty. For anyone that's a part of the Elijah generation, hear me. Don't worry about what it looks like right now. When your brook dries up, God's got a woman in Zarephath. <laughs> Somebody waiting. And if it has to be the U.S. government, if it has to be your employer, whatever it needs, God can use the most unlikely source. I want you all to hear me this morning. The people of God ought to be encouraged. They ought to hold their heads up because God's got them. Come on, worship team. As we prepare to come to the Lord's table this morning, I want us to take a moment just to worship God. I want us to take a moment to thank God. I want us to take a moment to give God praise, to give God glory, to give God honor for who he is. Thank him for the fact that the flower is not running out and the oil is not empty, that God is still provider. He provides in the midst of the drought. Remain faithful. Be a part of that Elijah generation. And watch what God's going to do. I'm going to invite Pastor Katani to pray, pray as our worship team sings softly. She's going to pray for us. Pray that if you're here and you hear me and God wants to bring you into a relationship with him, you come. Then we're going to come and go to the Lord's table. Amen.